Hello guys, Crispy here, welcome back to another video in this one, my friends, I'm gonna be testing a GeForce RTX 3060 in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. This one is the AFOX model of the card, we are running it with the latest NVIDIA drivers and I'm not manually overclocking it. You can see all of its specs right here in Tech Power Up's GPU zero, as the wire is enabled and we got 12 gigs of GDDR6 to work with and over on the left we're pairing it with the i5-13600K overclocked to 5.5 gigahertz and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 megahertz RAM in dual channel. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's go over the settings first. I'm starting at 1080p resolution using the LSS on the temporal upscaler. It's turned off at the moment, as you can see, the scaling mode, so it's not upscaling from a lower resolution. It's at native 1080p, and we're using the high settings preset. I'm just gonna disable motion blur, and that's it. Okay, so right away, I can see a big difference in terms of FPS compared to the RTX 3060 Ti, guys. The 3060 Ti was getting 60 plus FPS most of the time here on high settings. It still dropped into the 50s and high 40s in very intensive scenarios, but this is already dropping into the 30s. So it's quite a lot slower and the averages are nowhere near 60 plus FPS like the 3060 Ti provided. So quite a huge difference in terms of uh, the playability here on both of these GPUs. A lot of people prefer the 3060 because it has 12 gigabytes of memory. 3060 Ti only has 8, but you can see that in terms of raw power, the 3060 Ti is quite a beast compared to the 3060, you know? All right, I'm gonna stop it right there. You can expect like 35 plus FPS 100% of the time here using these settings, which is playable for a single player title like this one. I consider that an all right experience. Again, I played Far Cry 3 with like 30 plus FPS, 30 to 40 most of the time, and I was absolutely fine with that on a GT 630M. So this would definitely be all right. But we do have DLSS in this game, which does look pretty decent. I'm gonna set it to fixed mode and quality, and this is just the normal DLSS that you see in all of the games, okay? It's just gonna upscale from a 720p image up to a 1080p one, and it is looking fantastic. It's just slightly, very, very slightly softer than native res, but you still have all of that detail right there, as you can see. It does not look like a 720p image in the slightest <laughs> and it's good enough to put us at around the same fps as the 3060 ti got but at 1080p native resolution instead of 1080p with the lss the averages are now above 60 frames per second and the experience is much much smoother if i told you it was playable with 35 plus frames per second with 40 ish on average this is definitely a pretty playable experience and very enjoyable at the same time. Also, water might look a little bit worse here with the LSS enabled, but hey, <laughs> the water isn't really the greatest thing about this game. Anyway, moving on to the forest area, it's getting uh, 70 frames per second, so a little bit better than down by the water. Oh, 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 I hear Jack. Hello. Hello, Jax. How's it going? I don't want anything to do with you, buddies. You just keep on being you. Be awesome and... Uh, I'm just gonna get out of here, yes. 69 FPS average, perfect. We arrived at where I wanted to go. It's dropping into like the lower 50s at times, but it's still very playable and I consider this a super playable experience. All right, I'm gonna turn this off now and I'm gonna enable FSR3. FSR3 on quality does look a little bit worse than the LSS, okay? It's just slightly sharper actually but it also has a ton of noise issues while moving fast around you can see a ton of noise issues especially at 1080p resolution if you bump it up to like 1440p it becomes even better obviously and at 4k i consider fsr3 and dlss3 almost on par whatever you choose in terms of upscaling you can see that they're performing almost the same. FSR3 might give us like one or two less FPS from what I've seen with the 4080, but that's about it. But the great thing about FSR3 is that you can actually utilize frame generation in this title with it and with the 3060 as well, you know, Nvidia only allows you to have frame generation with 40 series cards and it's still not implemented in this game, but it will come. So I enabled frame generation right here, the scaling quality is set to ultra quality and the scaling mode is set to biased and if you're wondering what that means, well, there's the explanation on the right. All right, so this is it. I can instantly tell the difference in input lag, but in a single player game, it doesn't really bother me too much, especially above like 70 frames per second all of the time. 
and as I said, that it dropped to 69 just to, <laughs> to shut me up a little bit, but okay, it's fine. I'm going to start counting our FPS. 1% lows are going to be a little bit lower than what they should be because the frame time graph has a few more variations there, but it's not a problem, guys. It, again, it's a little bit noisier than what we played with so far, the upscalers and native resolution, of course. But it works, and it gets you 60 plus FPS 100% of the time. I think it didn't even drop from like 69 FPS. So those would be the real 1% lows, you know, 69. And that's very nice. Once again, it's perfect. I wish that NVIDIA also gave us a software-based frame generation for 30 series GPUs and 20 series GPUs. That would be super nice, but of course, uh, they only do it for the 40 series. It's hardware-based frame generation. It also looks a little bit better than this. Well, quite a lot better, actually. It doesn't really have a ton of artifacting issues, you know, and it looks cleaner in terms of noise and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's awesome to see AMD doing this. That's for sure. All right, let's disable frame generation next. And now we're playing at 1440p with native resolution. Scaling mode is turned off at the moment using the same high settings preset without motion blur. And look at that, guys. Oh my goodness. It's getting exactly the same FPS uh, as the GTX 1060 did at 1080p, very low settings, the lowest settings in the game. <laughs> just, just let that sink in. This is 1440p high, so again, it's quite a big difference coming from a GTX 1060. But hey, it's not going to be a playable one if it dips into the 20s, and it does very often. Holy crap, look at that. 23 frames per second, it drops from cinematic FPS. Cinematic FPS is 24, by the way. That's what the movies, or most movies, run at. So, yeah, that's very concerning and completely unplayable. We need the upscaling back, okay? <laughs> Let's do this. Let's use fixed on quality first. And this should put us above 30 FPS the entire time. All right. Oh, boy. Okay, so we gained like 15 frames per second. That's 50% performance boost, basically. And inside of the water... Looking in this direction, where we saw it drop into the 20s, low 20s actually, it's now only dropping into the mid 30s. That's a much more stable experience, and now it's back to being playable, my friends. <laughs> also, comparing this to the RTX 3060 Ti, once again we see a massive boost in performance with the 3060 Ti. I think it got 60 plus FPS most of the time using these settings that we're utilizing at the moment, which is a totally different experience. It's a next tier experience, basically, in terms of GPU performance and uh, yeah, you know, there is much bigger of a difference uh, comparing a 3060 to a 3060 Ti than a 3060 Ti to a 3070. <laughs> That's interesting, even though this and the 3060 Ti share the name, you know, 3060, yeah, the, the, the 3070 is only about 10-15% faster than a 3060 Ti, and 3060 Ti is about like 30% faster than the 3060, it's a big, big difference. Over in this area, it's dropping into the mid-30s once again, same thing that we saw near the water, and overall, it is playable, I don't really like to dip into the 30s very often, I prefer like 40 plus all of the time for uh, a game like this but it looks insanely good and you you get really good visuals and 30 plus fps so if all you need is 30 fps this is gonna do it using these settings at 1440p and it looks way way better than what we saw at like 1080p even native resolution like quality dlss at 1440p does look better than 1080p now with balanced dlss things are not really all that different you know it increases fps by like what five frames per second um, in terms of graphics they look a little bit worse you know but hey it, it actually is giving us those 40 plus FPS more often than not. So this might actually be the experience I'd go for at 1440p. Now with performance DLSS, water looks absolutely awful at the moment. It's It doesn't know what to do with all of those waves and it's just looks like that it's so noisy but over here it gets us a further like five frames per second compared to balanced not even that sometimes it even drops into the lower 40s 
Um, so yeah, three to five FPS more than what we saw at Balanced DLSS. And now you can start seeing a lot of pixelation issues or at least like um, jagged edges everywhere. It doesn't look very good, so I wouldn't really go down to performance DLSS at 1440p. But all right, let's use FSR 3 now with frame generation on, scaling quality set to quality and scaling mode is set to biased. And here we go. I think the 3060 Ti got like 60 plus all of the time using these settings and it still looks extremely good, you know? It's very sharp, it's not too noisy, although it is very noisy and it still has those little artifacts around the weapons crosshairs and iron sights. Yeah, I would like to see those things fixed, but aside from that very basic visual issue, that doesn't really happen everywhere, like for example on the bow, it does not happen, it doesn't have any of those weird artifacts, although it's a little bit noisy when you turn the camera around. Uh, so yeah, it, it works extremely well, it looks very good here at 1440p using frame generation and ultra quality FSR 3, but unfortunately it's getting just slightly higher FPS than what we saw previously. So what I'm gonna do is set this to fixed and this to quality, all right? Just turning things down slightly in terms of internal resolution, and okay, I can notice that that's a little bit softer for sure, but we are seeing 60 plus FPS all of the time at the moment, guys. At least so far, you know? Things are, however, a lot more noisy and I can see a ton of pixelation. Ah, that's, that's a shame. Once again, a lot more artifacting around the iron sights of the weapon. I keep calling them crosshairs. It's not crosshairs, okay? It's just the iron sight. Uh, you could maybe call them crosshairs as well. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What matters is it has a lot of pixelation issues like this. I mean, they're passable still. If you're running a smaller monitor, like a 24-inch 1440p monitor, for example, I have one right here vertically mounted, right next to me, actually. It will work very well, okay? It will look really good like that. But I am using a 42-inch monitor, which is 4K, and I can tell you that there are a lot of differences in terms of the image quality when you change it to frame generation. Okay, now it's time for 4K resolution. Performance DLSS is already applied because I don't want to do it at native. Like even at 1440p, it dropped from 30 FPS, so this would be terrible. Uh, ooh, okay, it's looking fantastic aside from the water again. <laughs> but yeah, it's looking really, really detailed compared to everything that we've seen so far. Even like native 1440p looks worse. Performance DLSS at 4K is, is actually pretty insane, you know. Unfortunately, we're starting to see it dip into the low 30s, touching 30 frames per second. I don't feel like it's gonna stay at 30 plus 100% of the time, guys. Um, that's a bit expected, I think, because, you know, it's a 3060. It's definitely not really meant for 4K in many titles. You can do some 4K in older games like GTA V, for example, and a lot of newer titles, I guess, if you use DLSS performance. But Avatar being the beast that it is with these insane graphics, of course, it's going to wreck the 3060, but it still looks insane, and especially at the distance, stuff looks super detailed. Like, even those things over there, those trees, at a super, super far distance, I can see some detail there, like over there as well. Look at that. Oh, hello! Hello! Is it Jack? No, it's those... Yes, it's Jack! Hello, Jack, how's it going? I'm going to bring you to camp. Can you come with me, Jack, please? Yes? Come over here. Why do I have x-ray vision here? Oh boy, come on, come on, come on. Where is he? I lost him. Jack? Hello? Where did he go? What the hell? Uh, anyways, moving on. <laughs> it's not gonna work here with these settings, but what about FSR 3 with frame generation and performance at the same time? It's gonna look rough, but maybe it's gonna get us very high FPS. Actually, guys, it is not looking bad. You know, I'm... I'm uh, <laughs> It's pretty close still to DLSS performance if you stand still, you know, like there is a lot of detail on things, but if you start moving around again, you can see the little noise around the weapon and moving things, you can see the, the little weirdness and artifacting around the iron sights even more amplified at the moment for some reason, I think, uh, and you can get by 
with 50 fps with frame generation it still feels okay overall but uh, the input lag is a bit insane <laughs> all right uh, maybe with a controller it's not gonna be as noticeable but it's still gonna be noticeable guys i i wouldn't really do this also you can see that gpu usage isn't really maxed out i've seen the same thing with fsr3's frame generation and 3060 ti i'm not sure why that happens it's pretty weird actually um, it's obviously not a CPU bottleneck. I even tested 3060 Ti with a 7950X 3D, you know. Um, it's not a VRAM bottleneck either because we got the 12 gigs on this card. It's just weird. 4K, again, is really rough. I wouldn't do this, but let's see how it does on medium next. All right, now we're back to 1080p resolution using no upscaler at the moment and the medium settings preset. And I'm gonna disable motion blur once again. Here we go. Take a look at the medium settings. Let's do this. Haha, -ha, look at this, my friends. We're not using upscaler and we are getting 60 frames per second. And the game is still looking absolutely amazing. It's dropping into the 50s, though, <laughs> while looking at the water. Ah, that's so unfortunate. Like, if it drops so much, why does it look terrible? <laughs> oh, dropping down into the 40s at times. Okay, okay. It's not as big of an improvement as I thought it would be, honestly, guys. Ah, it's still dropping into the mid 40s. But with DLSS, it might stay above 60 FPS the entire time, all right? And also... Can you tell a big difference coming from high to medium settings in terms of graphical fidelity? I know you're watching this on YouTube with the compression and it's gonna look pretty terrible probably because of all of the vegetation. The more vegetation you have in a game, the worse the YouTube compression works. But I mean, I myself can't really tell that big of a difference. You know, compared to other titles, the medium settings in this game looks like, what, high or ultra settings even in other games that are much more intensive than this one, you know? So I say it's it's a good result that we're getting here because the game still looks amazing. But let's stop it there. We got 52 FPS average, 42 1% lows, dropping into the lower 40s right here. Yep, 41 right there with the smoke. It is, again, not amazing. I expected better. But let's try it with DLSS quality and fixed. This should stay above 60, I hope. Yes, it does. That way, oh, no, it does not. <laughs> it dips slightly below 60 frames per second, especially if you move the camera around like this real fast. No, it's not doing that anymore. But it did dip previously. Right here, maybe? Yes, okay, 58. Not that big of a deal. Again, if you have a, a factory overclocked version of the RTX 3060, you might get 60 plus 99% of the time instead of like 98% of the time, which is what we're getting right here, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, right here, getting 70s still. So yeah, this is a super comfortable experience in my opinion. It even goes up to like 90 frames per second at times. Huge performance difference compared to, oh my God, uh, <laughs> the... The other settings, the high settings that we just tested, right? This is great. Look at that from here. 70s. Wow, man. Like, the, the sun just makes everything pop so much. It's so gorgeous. So if you want a really, really smooth experience, consider these settings. They still look great. Maybe overclock the card slightly if you want 60 plus 100% of the time. And it will definitely happen. So... Great stuff right here. Let's bump it up to 1440p. Here we go, 2560 by 1440. I'm gonna disable the upscaling at the moment and medium settings preset. Here we are. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Also, VRAM usage is still really high. This is medium settings. <laughs> it's not usage. It's allocated VRAM again. So it's actually utilizing a bit less than that. Um, so you don't really need an 11 gigabyte GPU if you want medium settings, obviously. Anyway, Jax, get, leave me alone. Oh my gosh, the jumps are real. Oh boy. Oh boy. Did they really, really jump far? We're getting comfortably above 30 FPS all of the time so far, which is all right, I guess, for those 30 FPS seekers out there, you know, like if, if you add a little bit of motion blur, it would actually feel a little bit smoother. And if you play with a controller at the same time, it would feel okay and it would definitely look amazing, even on medium. <laughs> so it hasn't dipped into the 20s yet. Oh my gosh, these are some big jacks. No, 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 no. Buddies, uh, just keep, keep, 
keep trying to, to hunt your prey, not me. I am no prey, okay? I'm, I, I'm very bad to eat, like, what does blue uh, taste like, right? This is the moment of truth. Will it dip into the 20s? It's already dropping very, very close to 30 flat, so I, I think it will probably drop into the 20s. Let's see. Come on. 33, 32, 2, through. <laughs> 30 through. <laughs> oh, 30 FPS, 29. Okay. Well, again, if you slightly overclock the card, doesn't even need to be a huge overclock. You will get 30 plus all of the time. I mean, there is a better way to get much smoother experiences. Uh, DLSS quality, that is. And look at that. Now we're getting 40s. Not bad. 50s even. I believe like 30, 60, I got 60 plus at these settings, right? Oh my god, you're a big guy. Um, <laughs> again, reminding me of Ark Survival Ascended. Yeah, 44, 43, doesn't drop from 40. So it's that 40 plus FPS experience all of the time that I was actually seeking. I would be fine with this. On a 1440p monitor, this will look really, really pretty with quality DLSS, close to native resolution. It uh, doesn't have a ton of noise issues, only with those little flying bastard thingies, <laughs> you know. Uh, you could actually see a little bit of noise around them, but it's very minor, it doesn't really bother me. If I can't get 60 plus FPS all of the time with good graphics and like minor pixelation issues and stuff like that, I will take 40 plus FPS all of the time in a game like this. And if it was a multiplayer shooter, it would have been a different story, obviously. But hey, this works really well and it performs okay. So let's go ahead and try... Should we try FSR 3 with... Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Here we go, FSR 3 frame generation is on. Scaling quality set to ultra quality with fixed scaling as well. So I can see a bit of uh, noise once again while running, but it's not terrible actually since we're using ultra quality mode on FSR 3 it actually looks decent like I would strongly consider this experience especially on a controller it will feel really really nice guys and if you lock it to like 60 FPS you can have a completely flat frame time graph and if you play with a controller it, you're gonna get used to the input like very very quickly and it's gonna feel like a console experience super smooth as well that's an option that is a big option. I think if I was playing with a controller, I would choose these settings at 1440p. But if I was playing with mouse and keyboard, probably quality DLSS instead because it still gave us 40 plus FPS all of the time and it felt a little bit more responsive in terms of the input delay. And lastly, for this video, we got 4K resolution, DLSS performance and fixed mode there using medium settings. And look at this, guys. I'm noticing like the quality of the details there at the distance on that particular tree is non-existent <laughs> okay like it's very very low quality from this distance you can definitely notice some things are very very downgraded coming from high settings but everything closer to you looks really good still uh, let's start counting our fps here getting 40 frames per second so much more stable than high settings at the same time but uh, yeah that that's a little bit concerning, as well as the shadow pop-in. Look at that. Actually, shadow pop-out, <laughs> because it's disappearing. The shadow is, is going away when we zoom in. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're gonna get like 35 to 45 most of the time, depending on where you are. If you're closer to water, it's down into the 30s. If you're not close to water whatsoever, not seeing water on screen, it's gonna be like 40, 45. That's pretty stable, you know, once again, 1% lows are under control, frame time graph is not crazy all over the place, so you can play the game absolutely like this, and it looks gorgeous, aside from the tree at the distance, now it's looking great, actually. Look at this, getting down into the lower 30s at times, so it's fair to say that, like, in some areas it might actually dip into the 20s, so... Again, just to be safe, give it a little bit of an overclock. But at least here in my little benchmark run, it is not dropping from 30 FPS. It's looking really, really good. And if you must play at 4K resolution 
well, with the LSS, because without the LSS, it's completely impossible to play it. <laughs> you should use these settings. And now it's the true last setting that we're gonna test 4K resolution, FSR 3, frame generation on, scaling performance, fixed and so on, and medium settings. And look at that, getting 40s. It's, it's not that different from what we saw on high, actually. Super, super sharp, but that comes with a drawback, which is the pixelation, <laughs> you know? We still have, of course, those little imperfections on the iron sights. Not completely terrible, but I guess if you are playing with frame generation at 4K, I, I guess just use the high settings. It's almost the same. Uh, also, input lag-wise, you can notice it very much. <laughs> Again, input lag is around like 30 FPS at this point, even lower sometimes maybe. But hey, the smoothness of 40 FPS is there if you really, really want these settings and th this experience, go for it. I wouldn't, because we got 30 plus with performance the LSS and it looked better. So that's about it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be back soon with another one. See you then. And as always, love you all. Bye bye.